So we put it on a trailer, and I did talk to Lee. Yeah. And so it's set aside. Mm -hmm. Just want to know where the historical society, if they decide they want that, it's huge. It's it, I know it was covered by a lot, but yeah. it's a pretty it's really, big rock. It, so, right. And actually, uh, you could see in the, I'm going to give you guys some emails too, copies of them. Uh, <laughs> Andrea actually wanted, she's like a tree that's planted there cool. to be, but I don't know, I mean, a tree that's 20 years old is yeah. very yeah. I don't know if it would survive, but here's a copy of my emails and Andrea's response at the top, and I thank you for this time. and. Well, no, we appreciate you coming in. And no it's problem. Great because we, we we made certain to sell it yet, and it was a matter of you know, okay now what? Where are we going to put this? So the historical site, but it's a great location. Super, that's great. Do you I'm have an idea to do that? how big that it is at the base? Have you talk to talk to It's about, about four feet wide. Is it really that wide? It's four feet wide and about three feet deep. Okay. Yeah, it's um, sizable. So Lee's aware. Just for your information. Yeah, we, we moved it. We recognize it. Value both in that um, memorial to Dee and McVitie, which she died in '93. I didn't remember because that was my first year in the board, but there's other stuff too, like the lettering on the buildings or anything else that the historical society people well, in the community know of other things. If the historical society doesn't want the uh, Schlick beer letters, I know uh, my sister in law, my brother Steve, is married to a Schlick beer, Debbie. And it was her grandfather, Otto Schlickbeer, who was on the school board for many years, that the Schlickbeer School was named after. And um, great-great-grandson, Mark Schlickbeer, is still farming and lives over on Herzog and would very much like, I mean, rather than just have it destroyed or something, I think. We've already gotten a message through Steve Pop, so it's, yeah. it's in process. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Which but are related to but as we well. haven't had any contacts regarding Schwab, so we don't know if the historical society might be the place for those letters. Yeah, the in there, the other thing because when I was talking with Lee, I had mentioned the flagpole that's in front of Schwab has a little plaque. It's from 1953, so the flagpole itself is not. There's no value, or you know, there's. It's not even usable, but the you know the cement base. If I don't know if someone would want it or if they, you know, Lee said, well, maybe the historical society. Right. I, I'd be happy to talk to them about that. I don't want them to be the place where we just take stuff. Right. Uh, I'd rather have them decide on that. I'm know, sure we'll really find want. a place for the base of the flagpole. I think that could very easily be housed at the schoolhouse as well. Yeah, and yeah, any yeah, other, uh, you know, things you'd like to yeah, salvage. Is there any on the, inside the, the, the vestibule area of the building? Any plaques on the wall there? No, we, we went through it again on, I forget what day, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, it was Tuesday because I was dressed for it. And uh, <laughs> there isn't anything I was looking because of the, sometimes there's a bounded plaque right. and stuff like that, but there wasn't anything okay. on the walls in there. Um, so inside, there wasn't anything, but we did pull the rock Friday, and we have that flagpole. I don't know how deep that thing goes down, so. Maybe Sandy Well, I know they don't want another flagpole because I already brought that up to them, but possibly the plaque that's at the base of the and maybe flagpole. Maybe she'd want to swim by and look at it, maybe, or something. Right. Yeah, that would be when we, I was talking with uh, our maintenance supervisor, the screws that hold that thing in there. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it was, it says 1953 on it, so. That's how old those sure. things are. Sure. Um, at old best, old. we might have to, we could maybe drill the screw holes out, and the plaque might come off. Is the plaque metal? It's metal. Probably brass, huh? Brass or bronze? Yeah. But any other old artifacts, like books or maps, or you know, if you think it, if you'd like to see them saved. It could possibly be housed at the Little Pop Schoolhouse. Okay. 
just getting a call or seeing, you know, So I'll, okay. just so you have, because I was going to talk about this in superintendent comments, but since you're here, can I jump ahead just to mention? Sure you can. So we are uh, starting the process. Uh, actually, today they were there to go through how they're going to do the asbestos removal yeah, of the glue and the tile and stuff. And then the beginnings of Schluck beer coming down will happen around December 1st. So they will fence that off. And I know you do walk by, so there'll be a fence. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try to coordinate it so they can still get machinery in there and people can still walk down. Uh, so that just might give you a little bit of a timeline. Mm -hmm. so. uh, I was actually the first kindergarten class to go to school there. Mm -hmm. It opened, I started kindergarten in 1957 and Schlick beer was, they did call it Schlick beer then, at first it was called Bridgeport Elementary, and it wasn't quite finished. So I actually uh, started kindergarten in the Old Town Hall, which is in the Bridgeport Historical Society, but that used to be over on State Street, but that's where I went to kindergarten until about, it was about November, and they finally got everything wrapped up and, uh, that was in 1957. Hate to see it go, really, you know, it's a great school, but. New opportunities now. Right, right. All right, thank you for your okay, time. Thank you. Thanks, okay. thank Bye. You. Okay, let me adjust the adjustments. Hearing none, I'm working with Dr. Ross Saswa. Uh, I didn't print all that off. It's a the. Did you print it off? Yeah. So like all of the community center, I was part of the stormwater authority. What's the last two? So money is contributed, and then there's the stormwater system within the county. So annually we go over the budget, and I believe we take a approval on it right yes As it has board. to be approved by the board um Patty already knows the budget for the expense so in 2021 the budget for uh the saginaw area stormwater authority was one hundred and ten thousand one hundred and ten dollars uh goes for a variety of things um i guess the most Costly is catch basin ins inspections, consultations, administration. Um, so Bridgeport Charter Township handles about five thousand six hundred seventy-four dollars of that. And so we are part of that consortium in twenty twenty-two. The budget is $95,810, so a little bit less, and that is a contribution from Bridgeport Charter Townships of around $5,107.99. So we participate along with Bridgeport on that. Was there a portion of it? It's broken, everything's broken down. Yeah. Uh, uh, school district. Three. What are going on? No, go ahead. Is that 387? Is that ours? Or am I looking at the wrong? Are you looking at Oh, I'm sorry. $2,359.15. Yes.
motion to adopt the Saginaw Area Stormwater Authority Resolution. So moved. Support. Second. Any discussion? Second. Okay. Thank you. Next up is the consent agenda. We have November 2021 check register, November 2021 board report, minutes from the October 11th, 2021 business meeting, and the October 25th, 2021 board retreat and the personnel report. A motion to approve the consent agenda. So I think we accept the consent agenda, but you have amended <coughs> personnel report. Okay, motion, support. Support. Motion, support. Any discussion? Other, can I jump in and say congratulations? We hired Zania Beatty, who is a elementary special education. She came through the Saginaw Valley program, was a uh, student teacher, then a substitute for us, and uh, now a special ed elementary teacher, which is duly needed. And she was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. I have a problem with the I think any time we're looking for a teacher is not going to be easy. Mr. Bukowski has not been with the school for since last spring. Oh, that's so it's that's been that. a bit. Yeah, so we have been operating um, outside of him being available. Okay. Are you science, correct? Yes, science elementary ed. Discussion? Mr. Lyon? Yes. Ms. Morales? Yes. Mrs. BSC? Yes. Mr. Yes. Okay, next up we have a closed session is provided for that 267 1976, section 8B, student discipline discussion. Uh, with the absence of the student and the guardian. Give the, the 
student and their parent uh, opportunity for moving forward, depending on how the board uh, acts. Does the administration have a recommendation that they're going to make? Okay. Is there a motion going to close session? Do we want to? I'm thinking do we we didn't have superintendent because we weren't sure about timeline. And I didn't think about it until we got to closed session to ask about adding it in the agenda adjustments. I got quite a few things to go. Yeah, let's do the closed session. Since we do have time. Well, let's do the closed session and then I will I typically ask you then after comments if there's anything else we're gonna do or then you're welcome to. Okay. Perfect. How's that sound? Sounds perfect. Okay. And I'd like to um, add to the motion to go into closed session for um, Section 8H, exempt material discussion since they are not here, and that covers us. Is there a motion provided to go into closed session provided for an act 267 of 
students were confirmed positive for the year, yes sir. That's another key, I'm saying that very specifically, confirmed positive. Two uh, staff members currently are confirmed positive as of late Friday and early this morning. Um, in five, that's five total confirmed positives for staff year to date. We have six students currently in quarantine. 36 students have chosen quarantine for being close contact for the year. We have six students that are antigen serial testing right now, which is a, we dropped a lot of kids off on Friday. Thank you. Uh, and we are at a total of 176 students have participated and been tested for five consecutive days after their expo uh, close contact. And we have two staff members in quarantine and that would be a total of five that have been in quarantine for the year. That's our COVID numbers as of today at approximately 4 p.m. or so. Um, I'm still proud of the community, of the kids, of the families uh, going through the effects of COVID, especially those that are end up being put off work, uh, sometimes for their close contacts and the children are affected. But it's, it's still, it's gonna be something that we face for a while. Moving on. We have fiber optic, uh, our internet line that was going into Schrod Schluckbeer. We uh, contracted to pull that line out of there and bring it all the way down in front of the concession stand of the high school and we had a, a bid process in place to take that go underneath the road so bore down come up into the concession stand and put a server in the back room of the concession stand that server would be the main server for the entire athletic facility. From that, we would bore down and we would go across to the uh, announcer's booth for the football field and up into the booth and place the sort of server panel and we would be able to project out over top of the football field uh, internet Wi-Fi and run our video and potentially the future uh, scoreboard and pretty much anything else that we have that is in the future for the athletic field will need internet service. From, that's one leg. The other leg would go from the concession stand to the barn that's across uh, that we have sort of a locker room in one half of it and facility equipment in the other half would go in there and from that it would go to the softball field and to the baseball field and project internet out over our entire athletic facility. So we did the walkthrough I don't remember which day now. I was freezing out. I know that much. So that's on the way. Um, the key was getting the fiber out of those buildings before that was, they weren't able to come out of those buildings. So right now we do have everything at the, kind of by the pole, by the concession, across the street from the concession stand. So I just want to let you know, that's a big extension for us, uh, having uh, internet, service uh, in our athletic fields is great for community members, it's great for participants, 
it's great for the teams because it, for the first time ever they'll be able to video uh, and it goes right we have we have the systems we have huddle systems that just needed a reliable expansive internet source and this will provide that so the sports teams will have their video they'll have all of the access they'll be able to do the scoring uh, future endeavors with uh, lighting and other things are they're all linked to the internet now so all of this has been approved financially previous year for save we've already approved the funding to do all of this is my point this is all underneath the threshold the it's all well within the threshold. We we did the bid option okay. to open it up, and not just say one yeah, company. Man, yeah. So pretty cool stuff for the yeah. kids there. We have um, I have we talked a little bit in the past about the ESSER three survey. And I've looked at a number of schools' ESSER 3 surveys, and I will tell you they are very limited. I brought a couple of examples. They simply, one is even a one-pager, but it basically says each of the, the priority components of the 15 that the federal government set, which would you like to see us spend money on? I just wanted to share that with you as this is what's going on out there it isn't we'd like to invest in infrastructure and specifically what are those infrastructure pieces so what we're I, we pivoted and patty and i are going to include here's what we've spent funds on. Um, a whole bunch of technology, laptops, one-to-one, -one, all those things. We will be adding that in to our survey, the survey to go out later this week. It will say, here's what we've spent so far. And here are the options that are on the table. And then see what we, we hear back in terms of feedback from those. I think that's a pretty good deal to give our community and our stakeholders the information. We know that we have technology and all kinds of things happening. We know that we did hotspots for throughout the community. Uh, I don't know how much airtime that's gotten out in the community necessarily. And we're talking about ESSER funds that are many times more than what we originally granted in the start of COVID so I don't think following the lead I think we need to go make our own way and not because what I'm seeing from these are pretty pretty much would you like to spend money on ensuring all students receive high quality instructional materials I think we would all say yes, but what does that really mean for a parent or a student that could, well, I mean, you make it mean whatever you want to be, but I, I just, I'm disappointed in that. We had a meeting last Thursday and I got this information, so uh, I thought I would share it today that we will expand ours out. So we'll get that and that'll come back and we'll have the discussion at the December board meeting and hopefully finance committee just the week prior a moment uh, to talk about some of those things community Christmas this is a joint venture between the Bridgeport Bertrand Chamber of Commerce and the schools uh, we started this collaboration that's been a couple years but this is really where we kind of put it together this year with the the uh, spearheading for the Chamber of Commerce. They are putting up Christmas trees and five businesses and I 
don't have the printing of which businesses they are. And those businesses will have, um, and I likened it to the old days when we had a newspaper, the Saginaw News, and you open it up and here were the sort of uh, wish list that families put in there. I love that, we don't get a paper anymore, so that doesn't really work, I guess, but I love that, because you could go in there, you could pick number 7453, and, and make a donation specifically for them. So we have uh, five businesses that'll put up these trees, they'll have all these wish list items as ornaments hanging on there, and we will be in a position, hopefully, is if everyone's in a giving mood this season, to support several families in Bridgeport uh, for Christmas time through the community Christmas joint venture with uh, the Birch, Bridgeport Bertrand Chamber of Commerce. That being said, we also do our own Thanksgiving kind of uh, meals and we do Christmas uh, pieces. As you know, Santa Claus made a visit again last year to our family, so uh, that's still all going to go on, and, and I think he's scheduled for a week's worth, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how the gift giving goes. Is everybody naughty or nice? Uh, Santa, I do believe he plans on bringing an elf for help and support, because that is a big job. There's no doubt that that's a lot of gifts to carry. Around, so. so that's coming up. Just keep that on your radar. Uh, it's pretty cool, pretty fun. We also have uh, on November 4th, the Federal Occupational Safety OSHA issued a um, mandate, I guess, to require vaccinations for businesses or organizations with over 100 people, employees. This is going to take a minute to flesh out. Uh, there, It's in the court systems as well. I thought it was already a federal judge or the on it. I haven't paid attention today. The Fifth Circuit Court, I know, on Saturday issued a ruling of a stay. The Sixth Circuit Court handles Michigan cases. There's, a, as far as late this afternoon, there was pending uh, action on that. The judge hadn't ruled yet. Uh, what does that mean for schools? It means I'm um, getting an email back blast from multiple lawyer entities every day explaining the logistics of mandated vaccinations and what does that look like, what do we have to be prepared for, and I'm going to say in my, uh, I hope that this does not go through and force our employees to have to make a decision uh, on employment or vaccination or weekly testing. That's my personal hope. I, I think we've done a great job at Bridgeport in 18, 19, 20 months now of personal responsibility. And I, I'd like to see that keep going. The length of time that this temporary uh, order is just six months. So it literally covers from January 4th until June. And after that, they have to go through a whole different kind of government process to make this an actual regulation. So it really is frustrating because it places a lot of requirements on businesses and organizations at a time when employee employment is available, employees are not necessarily available. And that would be devastating to any school, 
to lose teachers, custodians, food service that chose not to uh, go along with the existing uh, order. Do we have windage and elevation of how many people that would represent? If in fact we didn't, we didn't get to stay. Uh, we have not. Would we even be able to run the school district if this, in fact, if those uh, the, the shortest answer I can tell you is no, we would not be able to run the school district. Right. That's it. No, it includes, includes part time employees as well as full time employees. It does not include contracted employees. <laughs> Although we are over 100. So heads up on that because that's I you know to be honest I don't know where this goes and let the lawyers hammer it out and the courts and the judges but it in it, let's say it doesn't nothing changes December fifth is the date that we would have to have something written and in place and it would begin on January fourth. And it does require employees, employers to get vaccination status for all employees. Isn't that a violation of HIPAA? Um, it also requires granted time off, paid time off for vaccination uh, and any side effects to the vaccination or boosters. Many, we will have a booster availability next Friday for our employees. Uh, this predates all of this. Uh, but that is what is in there. And it does require employees to provide their vaccination status. And I think that's not a great situation. And and if there is testing that is required with that uh, question. <laughs> to get the booster, they have to prove vaccination status to the Department of Health, not to the school district, correct? Yes. All right. So that would not necessarily be a HEPA violation. It would be simply a validation because they're not going to take a copy of that. Uh, this requires us as an employer to have the document have a record record from a health care provider, the vaccination card, medical records that document the vaccination, uh, immunization records from the public health state or tribal information system, or other official information and documentation that contains the type of vaccine, the administration date, and the name of the professional clinic or whoever administered the vaccine. So we would be if this all was to fly January 4th, that would be in, that would be in front of us. And keep in mind, as, as, this, as people talk about this, as far as I'm aware, this the most, the longest length of time they can do this type of mandate is six months. So within that six month period, they have to go through a different process to make this an OSHA requirement. And now my OSHA, Michigan's version, is not allowed to expand upon the, or not allowed to reduce the, the federal, but can expand. And they have been, they have said and maintained that they would not expand, that they would just accept it. Is there anywhere in all of these legal communications that anyone said where this exempts employers from HEPA violation of suits? Um, because if I were not that I've read, I think that's part of what's <coughs> being litigated right now. It sounds as if there's a no-win situation here where. I'm not sure that we're talking. Right. Well, but at the end of the day, as an employer, you can't force people to provide new medical information without violating them. We've already had kids that uh, have 
have suffered greatly because of COVID. And so now let's put them in a worse situation by potentially impacting school systems that can't get teachers already. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Well, also, but don't worry about it. We'll give you some more extra money. And you can spend it on computers. Expand the circle into hospitals and the whole situation of them not being adequately staffed currently, that they've closed floors down in local hospitals because they don't have the staff to be able to, to run them. And the whole thing is the science of the I'm sorry. I know. Yeah, just the further emotional end of it is for non vaccinated individuals, they would be required by this to wear a mask. Most of our kids wear masks. And we maintain, you want to wear a mask, wear a mask, great. If you don't want to wear a mask, okay. If you want to wear five masks, wear five. It's up to the, the student, it's up to the adult, and that's important, I think. This puts all kinds of constraints. And as Pat said, we're in a, a tight situation um, local school district down the road across the river was not open today uh, for lack of inability to staff their classrooms. I, I think that that is a real, real possibility in the near future if we're staring at this. So I'll keep you guys posted. If this ends up pushing through with the December 5th, um, where you have to have a plan and all of the, those kinds of things by December 5th, obviously we would need a, a special uh, board meeting to meet that, but I will keep you guys posted on that. So I want to say to you guys, I want to protect our employees and our students our families and our community. And in order to do that, we need freedom to be able to do that effectively. And I don't think that it protects the students, the staff, and the families if we have to shut our doors for a period of time because we don't have employees. I think that is much worse. We have seen very hard to explain numbers that come out of schools in terms of COVID positive. And I would say what other organizations are going to the lengths that schools go to to tell everybody about COVID in their businesses or tell everybody about COVID in their organization? Nobody, only schools. So this is undue pressure on our staff, and the kids and the families it's just uh, it's over the top and I think it will make things much more unsafe if we were closed and kids had to be at home we know that we know that's true because we faced it So to end on a positive note, <laughs> we are all set to begin uh, pouring the pads for throwing pits for our shot put and discus throwing. They are no longer going to be on the other side of the road in the woods away from everything. They will be uh, just south 
uh, where the JV softball field is. There'll be a shot put, shot put, discus. And uh, so that's going to be starting here really quickly. By springtime, we'll have everything over in the athletic facility. Hopefully by spring we have that fired up and internet going. Uh, should be very exciting uh, as we, we do have championship track athletes, state championship track athletes uh, returning again this year. Our 100 and 200 meter, uh, or 100 and 200 meter jet yard dash uh, state champion will be returning for her third, not fourth because of COVID, but her third consecutive state championship as the fastest female in our division. So that's exciting. Very, very exciting. Is the discus pit going to be fenced in? Or the, the discus doesn't have a pit. It has well, lines and it just goes out. But there's not going to be a, a fence around it to guard against air and throws. There is like a it's a net. We're going to get a net system that's out okay. those poles, not fence. Just curious. So, I'm curious. Yeah, that's that goes kind of like just, it kind of comes out like this. But they they also don't throw at the same time. So a discus when discus is throwing, there isn't anybody on the shot puts and vice versa. But where they're going to be at. They're pretty spaced apart, okay. so you, it, it'll be good. There's a lot of room between where that's going. If you know that flagpole that's kind of out there, it's kind of right by that, just this side of it, or just the south side of this side. So they, can, if they throw it as far as the baseball stuff, they shouldn't be in, in high school. It'll be Olympians. That's it. Anything else from anybody? Okay, hearing none, we are adjourned.